Hey guys, today I'm gonna teach you guys how to play Vayne AD Carry in Season 11, guys. We're going to be watching a very specific player. This guy is a Korean challenger player. He has about 1,119 points right now. And he has incredible, amazing, and just insane stats right now already. We're just about a couple days into the season, and this guy is already destroying solo queue with Vayne, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be watching this guy today. Also, I will be explaining a lot of stuff with this as well. So with that being said, let's get started right away. Now, the best runes that you can possibly take for Season 11 on Vayne, um, also the runes that he's pretty much taking right now, uh, this is Press the Attack as the main keystone, having Triumph, Alacrity, Coupe de Grace, Taste of Blood with Revitus Hunter, with attack speed, AD, and armor. He also likes to start off the game with a Doran Blade. He also maxes W as the first ability in most of his games. Then maxing his Q as secondary, and then maxing his E as last. Now, last thing, he has an, such an amazing build, guys. Um, the items that he's running also in this game is the Kraken Slayer into the Berserker's Greaves, into Rage Blade, and then also into Blade of the Rune King. Now, we're going to be seeing all of this in this game, guys. So with that being said, let's actually watch this guy, see how the way how he plays, and I'm also going to be, you know, teaching you guys a lot of stuff with this as well. Okay, so he's actually starting off with like a level 1... Um, they're going to try to like fight level 1. It's actually looking pretty good for these guys because Victor is already mid. Now, one thing to keep in mind, guys, as a Vayne player, but also as AD carry in general, depending on the AD carry you're playing with, of course, uh, in this case, playing Vayne in the laning phase, depending on, like, the champion you play, you, you want to be really careful with how you position yourself. Okay, so, look at the way how he's already positioning himself against Alistar and Kai'Sa. Now, there's a couple things that you have to know when you play Vayne, so... Vayne is one of the most risky AD carries of all AD carries by far right now. If you make it through the early game with Vayne in the lane and you make it towards the first item where the power spike is, all the way up to like mid late game, she's one of the most hard scaling AD carries in the entire game. Now a couple things to, to keep in mind when playing... Oh, look at that dot by the way. Like a couple things that you need to know when playing Vayne is the way how you like um, the way how you position yourself throughout like the counter matchups, right? Now in this case, uh, this guy in specific, he's playing against an Alistar, including a Kai'Sa. Now, if he actually does get hit by an Alistar throughout the lane, he's going to die instantly, right? You want to be looking out for champions such as Alistar, uh, Leona, and a few others in specific because. Champions that have a massive amount of CC are champions which hard, like hard counter Vayne, right? He's currently in the matchup uh, of Kai'Sa and Alistar as the opponents. Um, one thing you gotta look out for is the Alistar combo in specific. Now, if Vayne gets to survive the Alistar combo, as long as you like position yourself properly and you don't get hit by the Alistar combo, Vayne is very very good at destroying Kaza. As soon as Vayne makes it to level 6 or gets her first item, she will pretty much outskill like almost every AD carry. You just gotta be really careful of specific champions such as like Leon and Alistar. But in this game, specifically Alistar. Now, Seth's currently roaming mid lane, he's trying to make a play. Um, whenever your support's like roaming across the map, you always want to ensure that you stay within a safe position as shown right here. He's placing down a very good ward down inside the river using the wall to make, you know, have like such a huge gap. He knows that Alistar is currently not nearby. He knows that Alistar is roaming. So immediately going in for the all-in, trying to take down this Kai'Sa, guys. You see like, as long as you don't actually get hit by um like massive cc 
for like LSR as an example, Vayne can easily like one v one. Most majority of the champions, even in the pre six when she's very weak, um, depending on how many creeps there are, you can just one v one very easily. Now do keep in mind, guys, Vayne is a pretty weak AD carry in the early game. She's very strong after the first item. Anyways, he's starting off with building the Noon Coover. This gives AD and attack speed. Also provides um, basically like sort of like an on hit attack deal an additional 20 physical damage to minion monsters. Okay, I didn't, need, I didn't know that before. Just a couple days into the season, still reading items myself. Something that you can also do as an AD carry, guys, does, it's, this doesn't just apply to Vayne, but also many other AD carries. Um, if bot lane is being pushed all the way and you've just gone back to base, you can actually try to roam mid lane, see if you can like uh, join an entire fight. As long as you don't miss any creeps, uh, you're able to do this. Maybe you can get like a few kills on, uh, like, on the way back to bot lane. Always keep in mind, only roam through the map once you actually um, ensure that you're not going to miss any farm. Now, Seth's been like roaming through the entire game so far. He hasn't really played around bot lane yet. Um, because Vayne, she could just play as like very, very safe. As long as she like, as long as the support roams, you just want to put yourself into a safe position. And this set knows that exactly. He knows he can trust this person. There's going to be a fight in mid lane right now. Um, Vayne is already pushing down the lane. There's a pretty likely, like, pretty high chance Kai'Sa is going to walk over there as well to try and join there. So he gets to push this out quickly. Kai'Sa gets a kill in the team fight. Vayne literally pushes down the lane first and then roams after. This is something I always recommend. Like I've mentioned before, guys, do not ever leave the lane if the lane is getting pushed towards their turret right you don't want to miss the wave early on unless the way unless the team fight is really really close really like just a few steps away of course but if it's like all the way mid lane and you want to roam down there make sure you actually don't miss the wave always in, like always make sure to push it down first You see here guys, the lane is being pushed in all the way in bot lane. Vayne is trying to join the team fight here as well. Uh, doing it completely together with Seth. Look at the way how Vayne is positioning herself, guys. Look at this. This entire team fight is basically getting carried by Vayne here right now. Believe it or not, guys. Vayne was level 6 right here. Kai'Sa was level 5. Right? The reason... Why Vayne has hard carried this is because she has the XP advantage over Kai'Sa. Vayne was level six, Kai'Sa was level five. Because Vayne was positioning her, like because of Vayne, a uh, wave clearing the wave before, uh, forcing the wave to be under the turret of Kai'Sa, she was able to reach level six first while Kai'Sa was level five, then proceeding like joining a team fight after and using the ultimate to win. This is the exactly like the kind of way how you want to play Vayne, guys. Uh, you definitely don't want to miss out on the XP early on in the game. Kai'Sa is like constantly roaming through the map while Vayne is bot lane currently like, you know, taking all the XP. Or specifically taking like all the solo XP. Now currently he has a Noon Coover, he has a Pickaxe, and he has Cloak of the Agility. He's trying to build the Kraken Slayer as the first item. Which is honestly a really, really broken item currently, especially on Vayne. I I always like to like watch Korean uh, players in specific for games like this because the support is playing it extremely well. He's roaming across the map the entire time while Vayne knows exactly what to do when the support's missing out. This is like exactly the way how you guys want to play this out, especially when you have like a support that's been roaming like the entire time. This is the exactly like the kind of play style you want to have with Vayne. Like in situations specific like this. Speci like, oh wait, this is actually going to be a fight. Okay. Like all that's left to do for Vayne right now 
she is so unbelievably fed right now. She has about five kills. Pretty, like, good amount of farm. She's definitely, like, really far ahead of Kaiser right now. And Vayne is about to reach her biggest power spike yet, which is the Mythic item. Once she gets her hands on the, on the first Mythic item, Vayne becomes insane. She becomes super strong. And since she already has a lead, it's even better. The Kai'Sa is like farming out mid right now. The uh, Alistar has been roaming across the map so much that Kai'Sa has given up on this lane right now. If Kai'Sa was to... If, if she were to walk to bot lane right now... Right? Assuming that she would walk bot lane, she would be farming out right now. Sith and Vayne could easily dive down that Kai'Sa right now. Very easily, because Vayne has a stun, Seth has a stun as well, he even has the uh, the ultimate as well. So even if Kai'Sa were here, there's nothing that could be done. It comes down to Alistar to come over, and even then Vayne can just 2v2 them. Gets the turret at 11 minutes. There hasn't necessarily been that much of a lane phase uh, in, in this game though. Most majority of this game so far has been um, has been them playing smart. So the first item that he gets is going to be the Kraken Slayer. Now, honestly, guys, this item is by far the best item currently to buy for Vayne. This is such an insane item right now. There's really no need to buy anything else, but just Kraken Slayer every game. Now guys, once once you actually get the bottom turret down as an AD carry early on in the game, you always want to look out to like split top lane. Like forcing top lane either alone or together with your support. Don't always stay in bot lane after you take down the turret because you can you can have such a massive pressure in top lane as a ranged champion like such as like an AD carry with a support. You can easily take down a top laner as a vein, either alone or with your support. Always use this to your advantage, guys. Look at this. Jax is now getting completely pressured in, right? Just imagine if Vayne was balling right now. This is such a good position to be in for Vayne right now because she took down the turret, immediately going top afterwards, taking down Jax, and immediately taking down the turret as well. So basically, she's winning like two lanes at the same time right now, while also giving Vladimir a chance to farm out bot lane, which is very good because Vladimir can just farm out easily. Takes down the top turret as well. Very well played by the way how, um, or well, the macro play of Vayne. Now she gets the back to base again with even more items. About to get the Rage Blade as the secondary item very soon. It's level 9 currently has 5 points into her W, so she's going to Max Q next. She now has a Berserker's Greaves as well, and she's also building up towards the Rage Blade item. As soon as Vayne gets the. Uh, Kraken Slayer together with the Rage Blade, she becomes nearly unstoppable, guys. That's where things really get fun. So, bot lane turret has been taken. The top lane turret has been taken. The dragon is also spawning in less than a minute. So, around this time of the game is when you want to, like, group mid as an AD carry. To try and wave clear everything and to see if you can also take down the mid turret as well. Or just applying, like, you know, pressure in general. Ooh, she puts herself into, like, an awkward position here. Look at the way how Vayne is, like, handling this situation. Look at the way how she just did. Like, she saw everything coming. Even the Kai'Sa ability, she saw it coming from afar. Something very important, guys. If you are extremely fed, right? Assuming you have a lot of kills in the game. Make sure that you don't accidentally die. Because if you accidentally die while being worth like over 500 gold. If you die, 
you give away an insane, incredible amount of gold. You don't want that to happen. If you want to carry games completely 1v9, do not accidentally die, guys. It's such a big mistake. And you can clearly see it the way how Vayne's playing this out. She got herself into a bad position, but she immediately backs off, sidesteps almost everything, and gets out alive, which is huge, especially now. Especially with the way how this game's going so far. It's currently a matter of just farming out right now. It's just a matter of taking the next couple waves as Fane and then backing off afterwards. Because once she gets back to base right now, she will be getting the Rage Blade. Which is going to make her massive. She has a lot of gold to spend right now. She's extremely close to the Rage Blade, so... There comes the Rage Blade. So she currently has the Kraken Slayer as the mythic item. She then bought a Berserker's Griefs. And her item afterwards is a gun just, uh, or Gunso's Rage Blade. So right now the top turret's been down. Dragon's been taken. Bot lane is currently getting pressured in by Vladimir with the TP. So the best thing to do right now is for Vayne to push down mid lane. And immediately rotate towards the... Towards the Baron after. Taking down the Herald is the most important thing to do right now. He could he couldn't be saved. Vayne was Vayne couldn't do anything right there. That was just a mistake by the support. There's gonna be a massive fight right here, guys. Look at the way how Vayne is gonna position herself once she gets into the fight. Look at the way. She she sees Vladimir in the river. So she takes down the plant. Gets down in the river. Uses the ultimate. Look at the way how Vayne is positioning herself, guys. Chasing down these guys right now. Sidestepping Victor's Q. And continues. It's so important to sidestep everything, guys. Do not get do not get hit by Victor's Q. That can be really that can turn really, really bad for you. Sidestepping on Vayne is one of the most important things to do by far. Especially that you have like so much movement speed in the Q. Once again, look at the way how Vayne's positioning herself. Even when Alistar's going down and is the only champion right there, Vayne always positions herself in such a way where she where nobody can touch her. Uses the creeps to like kinda like uh life steal herself back. Just cleaning up everything, using the ultimate as well. Oh, I'm not using the ultimate. Didn't look that properly. Immediately stunning that Alistar using the inhibitor. And then backing up afterwards is the best thing she can do. I think that hack room is definitely- Oh, she's going back in there. Just take a look, guys. This was a very specific example. Alistar was the final champion remaining, and yet her- her kind of reflex towards Alistar is backing off afterwards, right? Alistar was rushing in. He wanted to do the the, the full combo. She wa she she cues back or she walks back afterwards. Immediately goes back in to finish it off, um, just to avoid the entire combo. You gotta have like really fast responsive time, like wh wh whoever is coming to you. Now she has the rep off as well. She's massive right now. She is worth about 1,000 gold. She also just got a Blade of the Ruined King. So she has the Kraken Slayer into the Rage Blade. Also it has the Berserker's Griefs. And then into Blade of the Ruined King. This guy is such a broken build on Thane. Not gonna lie. I really think that this kind. I, I think that Vayne in Season 11 is just... It's going to be super broken. It just is. This build is so massive. Now all that's left to do uh, is pushing down mid lane. Uh, specifically to rotate towards the dragon afterwards. Um, by pushing down mid lane, you create a space that you can use to set up something for the dragon later on. 
Like the entire team is kind of like grouping around the dragon because it's spawning very soon. And as long as you keep pushing things out, you can allow like having like more space to work with. Nearly getting cheese though. Look at look at this guys. Look at the way how she's positioning once again. This is how you want to play Vayne, guys. This is exactly the way how you want to play Vayne here. They have about 20 seconds to try and end this game. But that's not going to be enough because they're spawning in about 10 seconds right now. Vayne has about 15 kills right now, which is just massive. It's just huge. No one can stop her right now. Oh, they could have ended the game. They could have ended the game. But that didn't happen. Okay. The team was not... The team did not trust uh, Vayne right there. They could have ended the game. Quite interesting. Like, in a situation like this, Vayne is worth, like, over a thousand gold. So, once she accidentally dies, she gives away... A super massive value of gold. This could potentially make the enemy team come back into the game, but I'm not worried as much because Vayne, as a champion itself, is just broken mid late game. Gets that kill as well. Takes down the dragon right now. They can't. They can't stop Vayne. There's only Jax and uh, Alistar remaining. Look how fast Vayne can can even rush down the dragon. So the dragon's been taken, right? Now the only thing that's left to do is taking down the Baron. Once the Baron has been taken down, they can immediately group mid, push down afterwards and use the creeps to like um, get to the Nexus. The game is definitely a win right here. It's just a matter of taking down the, Nash, uh, the, the Baron and that's it. Look at that. Immediate life stealing herself back using the build. There's actually a fight starting right here. They're trying to stop them from doing the Baron, but obviously that's not working as they like the way how they want to. To be honest, uh, they could just walk down mid lane right now and probably end the game, but they're going for Baron instead just to, you know, ensure that nothing's gonna go wrong here. Leaves everything to Lee Sin. Okay. They're trying to stop Hakrim from potentially like stealing the entire Baron. Which is smart. That Hakrim has just died now. Even if Vladimir dies, it's not a problem. Uh, all that's left to do right now is simply to push down uh, mid lane. Kai'Sa has lost like extremely hard to Vayne in this game. Eighteen kills on that vein right now. It's it, this game is be, being played very flawlessly in many points. There's only been a few things about this game which could have been done slightly better, but this is exactly the kind of way how you want to play vein, guys. This is the kind of playstyle, and this is also the kind of like runes and build that you want to know. Anyway, thank you for watching today. If you guys actually want to see challenging games from me uh, as well. Do not forget to check out my stream, guys, because I'm streaming like six times a week. So, yeah. Hey, with that being said, thank you for watching. And uh, I'll catch you guys up next time. Pe <coughs> Peace.